it's my last day at Overview Farms, and I, I don't know where the time has gone. Um, and I have to say, I didn't expect to like working with cows as much as I did. Um, I've been here a month now, and I've kind of made friends with a few of them. Um, they've all got their own personalities. So I wanted to introduce uh, a couple of my favorites to you. This is Granny. Um, she's my absolute favorite. And poor Granny, she can't walk very well. She's getting old. Um, she's got stuff in her feet. Um, we've put some blocks on her to try and help her walk. But it's, it's a chore for her getting around. I come around in the morning and I get her out of her stall. And she's always the last one. And she'll sort of make her way slowly down towards the milking parlor. And she'll look behind her as if she's saying, are, are, are you sure? Are you sure I have to go down there? It's like, yes. And she will, she'll eventually make it down and she'll eventually make it back. And I just, I guess I just admire her persistence. But yeah, I've got a soft spot for Granny. And this is Annabelle. And Annabelle has got to be the most stubborn cow on the farm. She was made a pet by the daughter of the heifer raiser when she was off farm. And so she doesn't think she has to listen. And so when I come and get her up in the morning, She'll be sitting in her stall, and I'll come along and, okay, cows, time to get up. And she'll be sitting in her stall, and she'll look at me. She'll say, what, what are you going to do about it? And so I'll, I'll come, and I'll have to stand next to her, and I'll give her a pat and, you know, let her know, hey, it's time to go. And eventually she'll get up, but in her time... Despite all of her stubbornness, she's super curious and super comfortable around people. And when I'm around, she'll come and nose and she'll just want to come and see what I'm doing. And she's just really, really friendly and kind of frustrating when you want her to do something. So we've got about 120 cows here. And as you can imagine, 120 cows, they eat a lot of food. In fact, they eat about two and a half tons of food twice a day. And, um, well, two and a half tons is a lot of feed. So we can't just sort of bring it out in wheelbarrows. Um, we need bigger machinery. And it's pretty simple. Uh, this is a feed mixer. If you look inside, there's two corkscrews going around, turning and uh, mixing the feed. And then Robert tows the feed mixer down the aisles of the barn. And the feed mixer just dispenses a line of food right where the cows can get it. So this feed mixer is actually really important because the amount of milk that the cows produce is tied to what they eat. And so a lot of thought goes into getting the nutrition for the cows just right. So I want to share, well, what do cows eat? So this bale here, this is not hay, um, and the plastic that it's wrapped in is actually really functional. Because when it's wrapped up and made airtight, what starts out as hay inside ferments and turns into what's called grass silage, which I think is a little bit easier for the cows to digest. Um, and to that, you add a little bit of milled corn, uh, which adds uh, calories and energy. Uh, you'll add a little bit of soy meal or uh, maybe some canola to add protein, which uh, helps keep the milk production up. You'll add some minerals uh, and uh, some rumen bypass fat, uh, which I think helps bulk them up. And then you'll top it all off with another scoop of uh, fermented hay. This is also grass silage, but stored in a silo rather than in a bale. And you mix all that up, and that's what cows eat. So this is my last day at Overview Farms. And it's actually the last video I'm going to make while I'm on a farm. Uh, I've been on the road for eight months now, and I've been filming the whole time. So I really hope I have enough footage to make a pretty decent documentary. Um, but that means I'm going to take a hiatus from these videos for a couple weeks as I drive from Nova Scotia all the way back to British Columbia, where I'm going to edit the film. And then uh, once I start editing the film, I'll start posting videos again with some highlights of the footage or maybe good interview clips. Um, so I'll keep posting videos and you can catch those videos by subscribing to the YouTube channel. You can find out more about the big picture of the documentary by going to thehandsthatfeedus.ca. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in a couple weeks when I get back to British Columbia.